Question 3. Differentiate the following expressions with respect to x. Part 1 is a simple polynomial. So take the first term, x to the power of 7. We multiply by 7 and then reduce the power by 1. So multiply by 7, reduce the power by 1. The second term is a linear factor of x. So e to the 5x is e to the 5x times the differential of that bit, which is 5. So we get 5e to the 5x. Differential of log x is 1 over x, so the differential of 2 log x is 2 over x. The differential of cos x is minus sine x, so the differential of 3 cos x is minus 3 sine x. Part 2, x plus 4 sine x. What you have here are two terms in x. x plus 4 is one term, sine x is the second term. So this is a product, and you use the product rule. We call this term u, and we call this term v. So the differential of u v with respect to x is u dv dx plus v du dx. So we get u, which is x plus 4, and then the differential of sine is cosine, and then we get v, which is sine x, and then the differential of x plus 4 is 1. So we end up with sine x. Part 3, x over the square root of x squared plus 1. This is a quotient. We call the numerator u and the denominator v. And the differential of a quotient is v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared. v is the square root of x squared plus 1. du dx is 1. The differential of x is 1. Minus u, which is x, times dv dx. Now, dv dx is x squared plus 1 to the power of a half. So we get a half x squared plus 1 to the power of minus a half because we subtract 1. And then that is multiplied by, by the differential of the factor inside the bracket, which is going to be 2x and then the 1 will disappear. So that's where that 2x comes from. So now we need to tidy up a little bit. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of x squared plus 1. That will get rid of this square root sign here. It will actually cancel this factor here. I've got a half and a 2, so they'll cancel each other. And I've got an x and an x, so I'll get an x squared there. So I get x squared plus 1, which is this term here. The half cancels with the 2. That term cancels with the multiplier. And I've got x times x, which gives me x squared. And then the x squared plus 1 on the denominator becomes x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. That x squared cancels with that x squared. And they end up with the comparatively simple term of 1 over x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. Part B. Newton's law states force equals mass times acceleration, or F equals ma. Calculate the approximate change in acceleration caused by an increase in force of 3% and a decrease in mass of 2%. We're interested in changes in acceleration, so we need to rewrite this equation to say that A is equal to F over m. The acceleration is a function of the force, but the acceleration is also a function of the mass. If we change the mass and keep the force constant, the acceleration will change. If we change the force and keep the mass constant, the acceleration will change. So we need to use partial differentiation for this. Now, if you look at the equations at the end of the paper, you'll see the delta z is equal to dz dx delta x plus dz dy delta y. So looking at f equals ma, we replace z with a because z is the subject of the equation um, and we replace x with f and y with m. So that means we can write so we can write delta a is equal to da df times delta f plus da dm delta m. Next we need to find da df. Well if we differentiate a with respect to f we'll get 1 over m, and then if we differentiate 
a with respect to m, we're going to get minus f over m squared. So the ADF equals 1 over m and differentiate a with respect to m. So we'll get minus f times m to the minus 2 or minus f over m squared. Substituting these two into this equation we get... Now at this point we've got to remember that we've got a percentage change in f. So what we really want is dA over a. Now we have a equals f over m so I'm going to divide the left hand side by a and I'm going to divide the right hand side by f over m which is the same as multiplying by m over f which gives me this expression. I've got m over f outside the bracket here so for the first term the m's will cancel it and for the second term the f will cancel with that, one of the m's will cancel with that, so I'll end up with delta m over m. So now I've got delta a over a equals delta f over f minus delta m over m. These are the percentage changes. Now let me just remind myself, we've got a, an increase of 3% in the force and a decrease of 2% in the mass. So this term is the force and that's got an increase of 3%. This term is the mass and that's got a decrease of 2%. So I end up with 3% minus minus 2% which gives me a net increase in acceleration of 5%. State with reasons why you think your answer is right. The key thing to note here is a is equal to f over m. If f increases, a will increase. And if m decreases, a will increase. Let's just think about that. Consider what happens to this equation when f and m vary. If f goes up, a must go up if m is constant. If m decreases, a is going to increase. Think about some easy numbers. If you imagine m was 4, 1 over 4 would be a quarter. If m decreases so it becomes 2, 1 over 2 is a half, and a half is bigger than a quarter. So this denominator decreasing means this, this value here will increase. Therefore we would add the changes together. And that's the end of question two.